Next on the list here, we have this pretty decent article here, courtesy of Resident Advisor, The Return of Events, New York City. Um, New York is an odd one, but I me, because when I last went, there wasn't much of a of a clubbing scene that I was familiar with. Let me say back then, it was, then it, of course it existed, but I wasn't familiar with it. The only place I kind of went to that was great was, um, was it Santos Party House or whatever it's called, that one? It was like three floors, different music on each floor, like a complete vibe. Like that was really a great New York experience. I think it was a, a time where you only had to pay like a dollar to get in or five dollars. I don't know how much it was, but it was really great experience. I loved that time. But since then, obviously with, with me gaining more, you know, experience and knowledge about the clubbing scene overall i've kind of understood a lot more of the kind of history that new york played in terms of dance music and underground music and all that malarkey and electronic music so now with all this advance of all these other new clubs coming up to you know kind of putting out their own path it really want makes me want to go out there and party for sure it looks like a hell of a fun time and um this article here kind of depicting some of the first few opening nights you know obviously off the back of covid definitely got me kind of feeling a little bit of bow mo just says here from mass free clubs at full capacity to dance in your chair affairs kian mikilis is that how you say that kiana mickles reports on new york city's opening weekend so i think we can pop right here to the bottom this is the one here right yeah this one here let's go from here let's go from there. no let's go from here. let's start from here um, Nick Boyd, who has been hosting uh, Bossa Radio since its inception in April, says that the response to the events has been heartening. He says, whenever people ask me how it's going, I have to say, I can't believe so many of my same people who I really love are showing up every week. That's community. The intimate venue, uh, mainly composed of a small checkered dance floor, has been reformatted in a notable way since the pandemic. Yeah, Bossa Nova is one of the places I definitely want to go to that I've seen always been featured in places. You definitely see that kind of um, black and white floor. Um, dance floor sort of featured in loads of pictures the, fo the DJ booth with a little plexiglass on top so it's definitely somewhere I want to go check out it continues to say the cushion booths that once offered a place of a respite from dance floor activity were partitioned with plexiglass seating la seating laughing masters friends um, a wash in blue lighting Gen Z's and millennials dressed in casual clothes um, alone at the bar on their phones waiting for drinks or talking shop to the bar and their feet tapped and heads nod as an invigorating blend of East Coast club music garage r&b and trap fill the room many who i spoke to were very were, were vaccinated and seemed to be comfortable with the safety of attending this event it continues says here i was working the entire time during the pandemic and in the public places so i was constantly around other people says ellie bottoman 24 she continued and said i think that more of a concern for me than coming here a lot more people have come here all the time so i know who i'm around to a certain degree we continue here there's a couple more people standing at the rave Da, da, da. This is at the time of writing, 47% of New York's population are fully vaccinated. It's a pretty big uptick, isn't it? Or uptake in terms of vaccinations, especially when you consider the amount of, you know, false information out there or disinformation, the amount of conspiracy theories, people that exist, and just generally the kind of sentiment around the vaccine in the States has been a little bit different to how it's been received here in Europe. So to see 47% of people in New York take up the vaccine is pretty impressive to be all in things considered, especially consider how badly affected they were when they first sort of, you know, decided to wash up on their shores. It continues that on Tuesday, June 1st, Mayor Bill de Blasio announced that there for the first time in eight months, there were zero fatalities and the city has resolved the COVID-19. The seven-day positivity rate has also dropped below 1%. Despite the optimistic numbers, some like Han Yang, 31, still seem cautious about returning to nightlife. They said the following, we finally got our vaccine, so I'm pretty excited to go back. Though she expressed concern about contracting COVID-19 at the event. It says when you're in this scene, you, you know these people, you meet them, you see them all the time and you you become friends with them it's a tight-knit community and i still want to be part of that and that hesitation that kind of um concern is something that i've kind of felt from the outside again without being around people i've just kind of felt i just don't know why but it's one of the reasons why i'm very skeptical as to how big the return to clubbing will actually be especially when it kind of the initial excitement of the first few months kind of peers out a bit i think we're definitely going to see a different clubbing scene than it was prior obviously that makes complete sense as a bit of a misnomer but i think the initial response to tickets and the selling out of events or that malarkey i think it's giving people a false impression as to as to how it's going to actually be day to day and i think a lot of people who have promoted events 
prior to COVID would know that, you know, promoting a club event, even organising a birthday party for yourself or your friends in a bar, there could be, a, you know, 100 people who confirm they're going to come. But on the day, maybe only half of them will come, maybe less than half. So the idea that just because things are selling out, it's going to mean it's going to be wall to wall people, you know, swapping spear and all that malarkey is just really optimistic, especially when you consider the amount of damage that this virus and this lockdown has done for people's mental psyche and just the amount of displacement it's, it's done to. People have moved all over the country, all over the city. People's priorities have maybe changed. I think people are going to be in for a rude awakening as to what the scene actually is like and maybe it's be a good thing i think i still think it's gonna be a good thing i think the people that are actually going to be on the dance floor still are going to be the actual people that are about that life and really you know care about nightlife and care about the scene and want to be out there and dancing with people and all that malarkey but the ones that aren't are not ever going to come back I think that casual consumer, the ones that I kind of dreaded bumping into on dance floors because they just generally just came to get wasted, they're not going to come back. And I think that might be a detriment to some places because for as much as it's good to have heads and seeing people there, maybe the large part of money, turnover, revenue, income from these places comes from just the general punters who just want to get wasted who knows because maybe they spend more money i don't know really you know how the numbers work in terms of owning the club but i think this idea that it's just going to return to pre-pandemic times maybe in some cities maybe berlin might be an ex exception maybe places in scandinavia might be the exception and other places maybe places like you know um what's that place called that everyone's got to georgia in tbilisi and stuff that might be an exception but i think we're gonna see a lot of this sort of like hesitation and hesitancy going back because maybe people's just habits have changed people are just you know what i want to do other things i want to enjoy myself in other ways this is not the way i want to do my, my night you know my kind of weekends anymore you know spending all this time at home to suddenly go back to getting on it every weekend and having hangovers that last you know a couple of days it's just not as fun of a prospect as it was prior there's going to have to be a little bit of temperance a little bit of a kind of easing back into the flow of things kind of vibe as well so let's see it continues here starting june 1st bustle will ask for proof of vaccination is another one that's wild uh, proof of vaccination of a negative pcr test via the excelsior pass if i'm not mistaken excelsior is sort of like an 18th century word as well right it's very ominous if you're if you're not a conspiracy theorist that'll definitely make you think of conspiracies right excelsior that's something that's like isn't that like a if i'm not mistaken that's like a a way to kind of delineate between like the higher ups and the lower class right so it's kind of like a it's a separation word right i'm pretty sure <laughs> it's an othering of people so imagine the have between the, the battle between the have and the have nots so in order to rave in new york you're going to need to have a vaccine passport one way or the other showing either you're negative or if you got the vaccine like wild times in it created by new york state right? the state of new york um the government issued service is the first and only of its kind in the country a combatant to the rise of the fake vaccine card operators in the u.s madness with this requirement the club will be allowed to operate at full capacity with maskless dancing as the curfews for the indoor bars in new york in new york have also been lifted as of monday may 31st this means that bossa can reclaim its former roles new york's favorite and favorite late night spot guests can stay until the club's former closing time time of 4 a.m which is a vibe in it because new york as well doesn't sleep so imagine 4 a.m vibe but just just imagine the conundrum you're in if you're a clubber right you will you're anticipating the return of events you're anticipating the return of clubs they return but then they require you to have a vaccine passport and then they tell you the only way you're going to be able to dance and rave is to have a vaccine passport so the clubs are going to be pushing for you to get one in order to kind of keep you know uh what's that what's that ra statement um save our scene right you know in order to save our scene you're going to have to get a vaccine so even if you're anti-vax you're going to be put in a corner where you're going to be like if you want to protect your community quote unquote and protect your fellow ravers you're going to have to get one or prove a or have a negative pcr test it's just a complete shit show and <laughs> it really is it really really is man like i don't know what what a position to put people in you're obviously putting the clubs in the position where they're going to have to push punters to get vaccines which is you know already heading into a political place especially in the states it's a whole you know it's a very tense and political thing people are kind of keeping their vaccination you know status very private maybe sometimes very public maybe they're you know very forthright in their opposition towards getting it especially for people that are like you know 
because you'd imagine there'll be some people to be like hey most of the people that attend this club are under the age of 30 45 why should we need to get one it's gonna be that whole that kind of debate it's just uh oh, it's a mad conundrum it says here for club it continues for club owners interested in safety operate in safety operating a greater capacity and permitting dancing at their events the excelsior pass is a fast it takes about three minutes to set up and reliable option across new york clubs have been at the first to experiment with the vaccine passport inside a mixed response on party goes yeah man i can imagine it's a mixed response there's some party goes here sitting in what looks like bossa nova civic club yeah that's the kind of dj if i remember okay it's not plexi it's like a mesh thing net thing let's continue here tucking underneath a scaffold the entrance of Rumi sits unassumingly on west 28th west 28th street at 10 p.m a flash assortment of guests waited in the bustling line outside some sporting shaving on wigs others with glittery eyelids mainly um many barely wearing anything at all once they arrived at the door it bounced instructed all the guests to flash the excelsior pass if it, apart from the excelsior pass you imagine the person that misses all of this misses seeing a bustling line outside of extravagant wigs glittering eyelids people wearing nothing at all that's what people actually that's what i miss anyway just the viewing the you know overhearing random conversations people pretending or trying to act as not as if they're not high or not drunk security telling people to stand in line and not kind of make any noise or whatever it may be that random ubers pulling up like people getting out and trying to feel important seeing if their friends at the front uh, it continues um in late uh, in the night hours in the sorry in the night's early hours party founder lady fag spoke to me from behind a spiked bdsm leather sp- a leather mask explaining the backlash she received after announcing that they would only allow entry to people who could show vaccination proof for the app she says i got called a stupid bitch <laughs> i got called a whole bunch of nasty messages uh she said as her stylist gingerly tended to her hair and makeup you can't open a full capacity with a pcr test guests have to be at least two weeks out of their last vaccine shot so i don't care why anyone is writing for me a pcr test it just doesn't make any sense this way she continued about the requirement i feel a safer taking my mask off and eli does too the event lady fag runs is called battle him a circuit gig party that took place monthly at the same venue prior to the pandemic i'm told tickets to return to Rumi sold out in a matter of minutes as many were anxious to attend the first battle him since the state of the pandemic <sighs> what a conundrum you put yourself in isn't it so the actual people at the forefront of kind of maintaining or keeping together the scene right providing a safe space for people who ascribe to a certain lifestyle are now the same ones that are being harangued and harassed and abused by people from their own community because of a stipulation being put in place by new york state absolute shit show in it um the continuity of self-styled um, regular ray scott 36 arrived with two friends who had never been to the event and said i feel like there's a renaissance upon us it feels very 1920s everybody's happy everybody's saying hello everybody's wanting to meet and greet and touch and dance and you're hoping that actually happens right ray scott you're hoping that that's actually what's going to prevail that's what's going to lead people to having a it's going to be like a second renaissance as he said right in dance music you're hoping that's going to be the case with people and i'm i'm, I'm hoping that's that's going to happen too and that's why i've probably committed to the first couple that i do end up going to to just go into them completely sober just to kind of absorb and take in the atmosphere and the environment i'm in just so i can kind of really remember it viscerally and just to kind of ease myself back into it because you know being without you know the ability to kind of shuffle from right to left and stand next to a speaker and listen to really loud music is something that you definitely just can't jump into foretell it's kind of akin to like you know deciding to run a marathon tomorrow with no training you could probably do it but you're going to do yourself more harm than good at the end and the same thing goes with raving i think it's going to need a kind of a real slow and steady um welcome back to those sort of stuff going forward but you know what can we do what can we do but yeah the article is fairly long i'm not gonna read the entire thing so definitely check it out yourself there it's titled get back on screen here it's titled um the return of events new york city curse your uh, ra check it out fairly informative article definitely will give you a lot of fomo if you've been missing going to the events